but what if there are a way for Alpha Bank and Beta Bank to connect without even needing that? Uh, they could use, say, XRP. So this is the digital asset that's uh, native to the Ripple consensus ledger. They could use that as a bridging tool. Uh, so in contrast to our previous examples, the hypos were it was fiat currency from end to end. Each link along the way involved fiat currency. Here, banks like Alpha Bank and Beta Bank can use virtual currency to bridge that missing link just between them. Uh, and this tool could be especially useful for banks that are uh, supporting emerging markets. So let's say we have Alpha Corp now sitting in Brazil wants to make a payment to Beta Corp now sitting in Thailand for uh, products that it, that it purchased. So this means that Brazilian Real are withdrawn from Alpha Corp's account with uh, Alpha Bank and Thai bot are deposited into Beta Corp's account with uh, Beta Bank. But same question as before, how do uh, Alpha Bank and Beta Bank bridge that, that, uh, that link, that missing link between them? As a practical matter, it might be hard to find a common account holder that happens to have accounts in uh, Brazil and in Thailand. Uh, but what if Alpha uh, Bank happened to hold some XRP? And what if Beta Bank were willing to accept to receive some XRP? So uh, their XRP balances are recorded on a distributed ledger. So this is virtual currency balances recorded on the Ripple consensus ledger. Those two banks, Alpha Bank and Beta Bank, could agree as a commercial matter that Beta Bank has received full payment from Alpha Bank in connection with the Alpha Corp to Beta Corp uh, payment upon a transfer of a certain amount of XRP from Alpha Bank to Beta Bank. And in determining the exact amount of the XRP to be transferred, Alpha Bank and Beta Bank are implicitly agreeing to an exchange rate. So for example, Beta Bank would view this amount as the, uh, the XRP it's willing to receive in exchange for that Thai bot payment that's on paying to, uh, to Beta Corp. Um pouco sobre Jess Chang. Ela tem experiência abrangente em direito de pagamentos. Aconselha clientes em todos os aspectos da lei de pagamentos e questões regulatórias relacionadas, incluindo pagamentos instantâneos, intercâmbio de cartão de crédito, transmissão de dinheiro, Código Comercial Uniforme, que é a UCC, Proteção ao Consumidor, Padrões Internacionais para Sistemas de Pagamentos e Implicações Regulatórias Bancárias. Jess Chang ajuda empresas inovadoras a se adaptarem e prosperarem no mercado de pagamentos em evolução. Ela foi conselheira sênior do Conselho de Governadores do Federal Reserve de Washington, D.C., na sessão de Assuntos Monetários e Sistemas de Pagamento. Nessa função, Jess estava à frente da regulamentação de pagamento e do desenvolvimento da infraestrutura básica e inovadora de pagamentos instantâneos do FED, do FEDNOW e do FEDWIRE também. Ela tem ampla experiência em consultoria sobre o perímetro regulatório financeiro em evolução, particularmente no que diz respeito a stablecoins e empresas de pagamento não bancárias, parcerias entre bancos e fintech, inclusive em conexão com a infraestrutura de pagamento que alavancam os DLTs e outras tecnologias emergentes. Antes de ingressar no FED, Jess trabalhou como consultora do Departamento Jurídico do Fundo Monetário Internacional, o FMI, onde prestou consultoria sobre a direção estratégica da agenda de trabalho fintech do fundo e forneceu assistência técnica aos países membros. De 2015 a 2018, Jess atuou como vice-conselheira geral na empresa de blockchain empresarial Ripple, onde prestou assessoria em uma ampla gama de questões legais e regulatórias que afetam produtos de pagamento inovadores. De 2011 a 2015, Jess trabalhou no Federal Reserve de Nova York. 